Hello YouTube. Uh, today I'm doing a commentary on a very disturbing uh, video which shows the torture of Susie Chavez at a New Mexico detention center. Um, I've taken the clip or I've taken the, the video from uh, Poetics uh, YouTube channel and so the full video without commentary can be viewed on his channel and I'll post a link in the description um, but I, I felt like there were some things that I needed to do a commentary about uh, in order to show the public uh, what it is that uh, government is doing to innocent people um, for for no reason and and yeah we could argue okay is she innocent because she's at a detention center uh, but the fact is there's nothing that she could have possibly done which would warrant uh, this type of torture happening to her um, I am going to give a warning this is a very disturbing video uh, it's you know, it contains uh, graphic violence and uh, foul language. It's not for the faint of heart. Uh, I simply feel as though commentary on this video is necessary uh, because there are things that I noticed in it that I would like for the, the public to see um, regarding the nature of the these government uh, detention facilities and, and jails all across America. So, here we go. Stop moving. Get up. Stand up. Face the wall. And do not move. What's your name? Face the wall. What's your name? <laughs> Stop resisting. I wasn't. <laughs> yes, you were. Stay right there. Don't move. I need you to be quiet. Quiet. Stay there until we're done. So what we just saw was Eric Allen... Uh, who is the police officer that we don't see because it's his body cam footage that is uh, doing the recording. We see him come out of Susie's cell, and, uh, you know, she's kind of on the ground, and, and they tell her to be quiet and to stand up, and we actually see the female officer pull Susie's hair to get her to stand up. And then... Uh, Susie asks, is trying to find out what the female officer's name is when uh, the other police officer, male police officer in the, the background, he comes up and it it sounds like there's a taser used or he's applying some kind of a pressure, uh, probably pain compliance to her um, to get her to uh, fall down to the ground <clears throat> and... Um, where Eric tells her to stay there, and, and, he, and he tells her to stop resisting. And she says, Susie says she wasn't, and of course the officer says, yes, you were, in an author authoritarian tone, uh, which it doesn't change the fact that she wasn't resisting anything. She was clearly just trying to find out the name of the female officer and then was punished uh, by being attacked by the other police officers for doing so and now she's being treated like a dog told to stay on the ground and don't move until he's done going into her cell to well we'll see what he's gonna do put her in a wrist lock and twist her wrist until she shuts up and stops crying so here we have a woman in distress, and this animal, Eric Allen, orders the other officers to put her in a wrist lock until she shuts up and stops crying. 
as though increasing her level of pain and increasing her level of stress is actually going to help her to stop crying. So we just saw Eric Allen go into Susie's cell and basically um, tear off some pictures or posters or something that she had put up. Uh, looks like on her bunk or wall or whatever. Um, and I think that later on we hear Eric say that this is why uh, he had her get out of her cell at in the first place was because she had done this terrible and horrific thing of putting up pictures in her cell. And I just have to say, what kind of sick, perverted animal would decide that a woman putting up pictures in her cell to try, presumably to try to make it easier to, you know, be in, to offer her some comfort. Uh, what kind of demented animal would torture somebody for doing this? That's that's what blows my mind about this whole thing. What's your name? Uh, ah! Fuck! Be quiet! You're gonna break my fucking wrist! Be quiet! Be quiet! Be quiet! Be quiet. Thank you. Oh, oh. Uh, woo. You need to be quiet. Quiet. Thank you. Now we're gonna go oh, for a walk. Fuck. Ah, ah, ah. That fucking hurts! Quiet! Do not grab my hand. Quiet! 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 So now that Susie's been placed in a wrist lock and uh, she feels as though her wrist is going to be broken uh, because that is the level of pain she is feeling. And uh, I don't know if any of you have ever had your wrist bent in such a manner to cause such pain to where you feel like it's actually going to be broken. But <clears throat> if you have, you may have found that it was extremely hard not to cry out in pain of some kind. Uh, yet these officers expect Susie to be quiet. And we notice that uh, Eric Allen goes and checks on the other uh, inmates uh, in their cells. Oh, just to probably make sure that they're not watching and, and you notice that uh, one of the prisoners walks away, turns around and walks away as as she sees that Eric is, is going there because obviously uh, this person is uh, causing a feeling of fear. Uh, he uses intimidation upon these people so that they actually fear him and do not even want to look at him. Um, and then, you know, one thing I want you to pay close attention to in this video is the psychopathic nature of Eric Allen. You know, when when Susie is quiet, he says, thank you. Thank you. And then if she screams out, he's like, uh, oh, uh. Oh. And, and it's just, you'll notice that it, it's almost like he's talking to a dog. Like he, he talks to her like she is a dog. Uh, yeah. We are going to walk down to medical in between here and there. We need you to be quiet just like you are right now. No talking. No nothing. Any questions? Stop 
Why? Yeah, be quiet while we are inflicting great pain upon you. Yeah, just, just be quiet. I, I mean, I know that we're applying a lot of pressure and hurting you, but don't cry, you know. Just be quiet. Pretend nothing's happening. Pretend nothing's wrong. Pretend that we are not doing anything bad to you at all. Just be quiet. Because we don't want to hear you cry. We just want to take you to medical. Because we've hurt you. And we recognize that you need medical attention. But we want you to just be quiet in the meantime. And stop crying. we got to get you to medical. Face the wall. Face the wall. Can you put him behind her back? Yep. Look forward. We're going to readjust these restraints. Do not move. Do not face us. Face the wall. Hold on. Grab her by the elbow, the right elbow. There you go. Do not move. Just face the wall. Shh. Quiet. Bring that arm behind her. Grab that one. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got her elbow because I am an order follower. I do not take responsibility for my own actions. I just do what I am told. Do not move. Continue to face that wall or the window. I'm going to sue you. Do not move. Be I'm quiet, really you guys. Close your... Listen to my order, because I'm treating you like an animal, and I don't want you to move, so make sure you listen to my order, because we can't do this unless we torture you and make you be completely still. We can't have you sobbing or crying or doing anything else a normal human being does when they're being manhandled by... Three violent criminals. Bend forward at the waist. Keep your head down. Walk. Turn to your left. Easy. 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 Going down. I can just imagine Eric Allen sitting at home, watching TV, drinking a beer, 
and his kid comes up and asks him a question, and he just says, Quiet! Using the exact same tone that he has used with Susie Chavez. I'll bet that if we were to install a hidden camera into these police officers' homes, then we would hear the exact same tones said to their children, if these psychopaths have children. I hope to God that they don't. Come and pull it in. If you don't stop screaming, you're going to get made. If you don't stop screaming, you're going to get maced. You're torturing a human being. You're putting her in an extremely stressful situation. And she can't help but cry. Like, let her cry. If you're going to torture somebody, at least let them cry. This sicko, Eric Allen, I think that we will see he wants to mace her. I'll bet he can't wait to mace her. Because I'll bet he likes macing inmates. Because he's a psychopath. So any excuse... Any excuse at all to mace another human being. I'll bet he he I'll bet he takes pleasure in it. Here the female officer asks. Is this a typical way that we hold her arm or her elbow? Like, she knows there's something wrong with this. But is this the right way we do it? sound like ducks quacking at this person who you notice how they're having her walk they're having her walk with her bent down to her waist face toward the ground bent down completely at the waist and she's expected to walk down this long hallway in a painful uncomfortable state like exactly can you explain to me you psychopathic people who call yourself police officers but are actually criminals in uniform can you explain to me why you couldn't just allow Susie to walk upright down the hallway can you explain to me why you couldn't just maybe hold her arms and two of you walk on either side of her and just allow her to walk like a normal human being? Why you have to have her head down to the ground trying to walk forward all the way bent at the waist in the most demeaning and uncomfortable way possible? Stop. Stop. You're gonna get made. You're doing it now. Yeah. I'm gonna mace her here in a second. Go ahead. Oh, goody. Yeah. 
because I'm going to mace her here in a second. Because I'm a sick fuck who likes to just mace people. I can't wait. I can't wait until we pass by my office so I can mace this woman. Because, oh, I'm, I keep telling her to stop. I say, stop, 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 be quiet, be quiet, because I'm going to mace you. Because <laughs> you haven't been quiet, so now I'm going to mace you in a second. <laughs> I'm so excited. You got an MK4? I don't know. You got an MK4 now? Last warning. Last warning. So in he walks into the office portion, and you'll notice that the, the wall is lined with flags, just to remind everyone the, the flag, which represents, you know, murdering innocent people in other countries, torturing prisoners and inmates in jails all across this. America, this this flag which stands for slavery and legalized criminals and central bankers who control the, the government and pass laws to make sure that the, the poor are kept poor and that the ruling class is always above them. This, this modern day slavery which is designed in such an ingenious way to where most of the prisoners don't even recognize that they are in a jail cell to begin with. Yeah, that's what the flag represents. And it's, it's just sick that that's the first thing that you see when you walk into the office is, is this, these flags on the side of the wall just to remind these men of blue to, you know, be patriots at heart. I'm about to mace someone. It's just another day at the office, and I have a prisoner in the hallway, and I'm about to mace someone. Because this is what happens every day. Because I'm a psychopath that can go from torturing an innocent person to just walking into an office and whistling. Yay, nay. She said no, ma'am. Got So here you notice that they've put something on her head, like a a bag or stocking or or something. Some I don't know what it is, but probably some nylon type face mask thing and it's like really why why just to dehumanize her further 
like, I can't help but just view these so-called police officers as terrorists and this Susie Chavez as their prisoner. It's how can we dehumanize her as much as possible? That's, that's what I see happening here. It's just sick and perverse. Okay, we're going to make a left. We're going to be in the big hallway. It's locked, okay? It's locked. Just like that. It's locked. This literally looks like a scene from a horror movie. You have a long, endless hallway. You have the, these people with this person who is has like a sock over her head, bent down at the waist, being pushed along like a like a, a cattle. Toward what? Toward more torture? Another torture chamber where they'll have more fun with her? Where they'll murder her? Where they'll just abuse her in some further fashion? Like, just, if you watch this, just look at the striking resemblance to a horror movie. It's uncanny. Stop crying! Yeah, so let's stop right here because you've been crying too much and now we're halfway down the hallway. And now we get to punish you more. We get to play with you further. Cause you even more pain because really, we want to hear you cry so that we can tell you to stop. So that we can punish you for not stopping. We want to break you because that is our job. That is our goal. Yeah, you may be here for some minor thing. You know, who knows what Susie did to get her here in the first place, but all she did to find herself in the position she's in now is put up stickers or pictures in her cell. And now she's being punished and broken. And this is somehow justice. Remember in the hall, you were calm. I just lost my son. Quiet, you guys quiet, quiet, quiet. quiet. Me. Ah, 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 you want to stay right here? I can't. I can't. I can't do it. Ah, 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 I'm not ah, even hurting you. Ah, 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 ah. This female officer who is committing a crime against Susie Chavez, tells her now, Stop crying. I'm not even hurting you. Like, <clears throat> what kind of reality, what kind of warped, depraved dimension does this female officer live in where she can just decide, eh, I'm not even hurting you. There's no reason for you to cry. Yeah, you've lost your son, and we're, you know, demeaning you by forcing you to walk bent down at the waist, face toward the ground down this endless hallway after we've caused you great pain, and you're sobbing because you don't really know what we're about to do to you, but, and, and you're just scared, and you're sobbing, but, you know, I haven't hurt you, so I don't even know why you're crying. You're gonna get maced if you don't be quiet. We'll quiet you down. Last chance. You need to be quiet. We need you to stop talking. Here Susie asks, You're going to mace me 
because I'm crying? And they both say yes. Oh yeah, we told you to be quiet. And, and the female officer says, we need you to stop talking. What? Where? How does this equate to talking? She's sobbing. She's crying because of this horrible thing that this horrible crime that you're committing against her is the reason she's crying. And you need her to stop talking? Doesn't that strike you as odd? That she says, you need to stop talking? It's almost as though we're dealing with somebody who has to rely on certain legalese in order to ensure that things are done by the book so that she can check her boxes and say this is what we needed to happen because clearly this 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 wouldn't be talking in any colloquial sense but maybe it's talking in legalese and maybe because it's talking in legalese and we're about to mace her because she wouldn't be quiet. Maybe in order to check our boxes, make sure that we're doing everything by the book, maybe we have to tell her to stop talking at least once. How from what? You didn't do nothing to me. It's because you're crying if you stop panting. Would you like? Put her prone. Go prone. Just put her What did I do? You won't shut up. Let go. We need you to be quiet. Okay? So we're not hurting you. We're just escorting you. you are. We need you to be quiet. Now you're using excessive force. Now you're getting into stuff where we're going to hurt you over. You need to be quiet. So... Once again, the female officer tries to tell Susie, we're not hurting you. Oh, yeah, because you've put her on the ground in a prone position, and now you're stepped away from her. So since you're not touching her, then you believe that you're not hurting her? And Susie, of course, answers, well, yes, you are. And then Susie very bravely says, you're using excessive force, which is true. <laughs> Eric Allen and this female officer are, in fact, using excessive force. They are committing crimes against Susie Chavez. And Susie points it out. And what does Eric Allen say, this criminal, when she says you're using excessive force? Oh, now you're talking about things that is going to cause us to hurt you further. Oh, don't accuse me of doing excessive force unless you want to get hurt more. Eric Allen, you are a psychopathic criminal. I hope that you are punished and placed into a prison cell. And I hope to God that wherever, whatever kind of cell that you are placed in, that you never have to be tortured like Susie Chavez was. I hope that you never have to live through what Susie had to. But I do hope that enough people see that you are nothing more than a psychopathic criminal, that instead of just being on paid leave, that you actually end up in jail. Because you, Eric Allen, are a criminal who deserves jail.
and female police officer, you also deserve jail. Because both of you are criminals. How are you going to hurt me? We will. All we're asking you to do is be quiet during the transport in the hallway. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. All I did is go to medical to get x-rays and you guys fucked me up. What's your last name? Travis. What's your last name? Travis. Travis. We're not touching you right now, but you're still crying. I just don't possibly understand how it could be that the moment we take our hands off of you, that you don't just stop crying. I just don't get it. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Stop hurting yourself. Miss <coughs> Chavez. Miss Chavez. Alpha eyes. Yeah, they're they supposed to hurt. Me. And I'll you be quiet. That's the point. So here we see a woman who is clearly in distress begin to beat her head against the the ground. And we can see similar behavior when certain animals are caged and uh, want to get out, you'll, you'll often see them hurt themselves by trying to, you know, smash against the sides of the cage. And, and sometimes even when it is definitely a futile act, uh, it's, it's that, that call for freedom, that, that requirement for freedom that can cause someone to hurt themselves in an attempt to find freedom in some fashion. And just because we see a woman who is being dehumanized uh, beat her head against the floor, as much as the officer would like to paint it out as, as something, something other than a distressed woman, uh, this is clearly their fault that she did this because she should not be in this position in the first place. She's clearly in a delicate uh, mental state where she's lost a child, she's being abused by police, she's being forced to walk down this hallway, threatened to be quiet, told to not cry, threatened with mace, and now she finally gets maced. Oh yeah, and... Yeah, why, why are you crying when your eyes hurt? It's supposed to hurt, because it's mace. It's supposed to hurt your eyes, so why can't you just be quiet? We there. So I don't know if you caught that, but here we gain a little bit of insight into the this female officer. 
he says that she's the LTs. Go ahead and let her walk by, meaning she is the lieutenant's charge, whatever, for whatever reason she is on this type of duty. And we already saw that she wasn't very experienced in uh, handling prisoners. Uh, she didn't even know if the way that she was holding the prisoner's arm or elbow was uh, the normal method. So this is someone who is probably, I don't know, it, it, it's almost like a, a hazing or it's almost like a, uh, a way to test someone's mettle to see, you know, how do they deal with, you know, handling a, a prisoner? How do they deal with this new thing of, hey, you get to torture a prisoner when you go to work. Maybe this is something that she's looking into doing. Maybe she's uh, examining to see, you know, do I want to be a, a jail guard? Right now I just work for the lieutenant and uh, do do this and this and this, but maybe this and this and this is what I want to be doing. And, and so, well, how does she comply? Let's put her in this situation and find out. Let's, let's see how she is. And you'll see that the, the sock is once more on Susie Chavez's head. Uh, you know, pepper spray her and, and, of course, put something to cover her face to exacerbate the effects of the pepper spray and make it even worse. It's, it's awesome. Good job. Well done, torturers. <coughs> Go ahead, LT. Over, Sam. I'll, I'll give you 21, ma'am, here in a second. Thank you. Transmit on one or two? There you go. Ten four. Maybe my radio is not working. Here, for the first time, Susie says, I can't breathe. And Eric Allen says, quiet. Like, haven't we seen enough prisoners say, I can't breathe multiple times and then end up dead? Haven't we seen that enough times to where maybe when somebody says they can't breathe, maybe you shouldn't just tell them to be quiet, maybe you should... See if they can, in fact, breathe. And, or explain, well, mace often makes you feel like you can't breathe, so you actually can if you try really hard, but I'm sorry that I just tortured you by spraying mace into your face and made you feel like you can't breathe, but you actually can if you just try. It's just very uncomfortable is all, like, offer some kind of explanation, you know, just so people don't panic and think that they are going to die because thinking that you are about to die is also another form of torture. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Ah, hold on. Shut up. There you go. Eric Allen, you hold on and shut up. I don't ever want to hear your criminal voice 
order someone around again. You shut up. You are the psychopath animal. How dare you treat this woman in such a way and then tell her to shut up because she doesn't think that she can breathe or she's crying and all you have to say is shut up. Stop, Jesus Christ. Stop talking. Hey, hey, shut up and we'll get you over here. So here we see another person uh, who becomes a an accomplice to the crime. Um Watch her body language. See if maybe she doesn't seem to be slightly uncomfortable to be in this room. Notice also that everybody that you see in this video is going to be wearing gloves. And notice how that prevents... Yeah, I mean, you could say, well, they may be touching Susie, so they may need gloves just to protect themselves, yada yada, blah blah blah. But you know what else it does? It prevents them from leaving fingerprints in this room where they are torturing Susie Chavez. Two fought, there's two fountains of water. Hold on, you're right there. Don't inhale it. Stay in the sink. Who cares if it's still going to hurt if you pull her hair back? Like, does a person have the right to not have hair in their face when water is flowing through their face? Like, what kind of sicko are you that you have to put in this word of, oh, it's still going to burn even if your hair is not in your face? You know, <laughs> fucking asshole. So keep your face in the water. Keep your face in the water. Just keep it there. You'll be all right. Yes, you can. You're t We're not holding your face in the water. No, you're not holding her face in the water, you're just holding her captive, you're demeaning her and treating her like an animal and inflicting injury upon her and pain and spraying her with pepper spray. But, you know, you're not holding her face in the water. You can talk so you can breathe, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're getting your hair caught up in me. Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Hold on. Uh, so, Eric Allen just turned to the side and coughed and then said, Excuse me. As though he is a decent human and not a psychopath who goes from pretending to be a decent human to torturing people for hanging up pictures. 
Careful, careful, careful. Hold on, hold still. Hold, hold on, don't pull your hair. He gets caught on there. I can't breathe. Yes, I you can't breathe. No, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Stop it. I can't breathe. You're talking. You're yelling. You can breathe. Now knock it off. Keep your face in the water. You're not in the towel mode yet. Keep putting your face in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. What's your first name? <coughs> One more time. Susie. Ow. 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 It's burning. Yeah, it's supposed to. It's burning. It's burning. It's burning. It's supposed to. It's supposed to burn. Duh. It's pepper spray. So, of course, your face burns. I mean, that's that's the whole purpose of it, right? Hello? Never mind that I sprayed you with pepper spray because you wouldn't stop crying. You wouldn't be quiet. You know? Never mind that it doesn't really matter if the purpose of pepper spray is to burn because what actually matters here is that Eric Allen inflicted the injury of spraying you with pepper spray and then is now telling you well it's supposed to burn so of course it burns so why why are you stating the obvious face in the water oh! i have my hand on your neck because you're not going to swing back okay, okay. So relax okay knock it off what's your thing just making sure that you don't swing back what's your first name again oh, 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 oh. So here he passed her name, Susie Chavez, and, and notice, like, he couldn't even pay attention long enough to remember this human's name. He Because he has to dehumanize her to such an extent to where all he sees her as is an animal. So, oh, what, what was her name again? Oh, what was that? What was that dog's name again? Spot? Uh, D.O.G.? Hunter? What? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Susie Chavez? Oh, okay. And then he has to pass her name along so that they can grab the correct file because, of course, what they're holding her in there for has nothing to do with the human known as Susie Chavez. It has entirely to do with the legal fiction called Susie Ch Chavez. So they're they have to get her file, right, so they know what name to put on the paperwork because really we're not we're not talking about actual reality here we're we're talking about holding a physical body accountable for uh things that the you know like well I guess the trust known as Susie Chavez uh has has coming to her for punishment, you know, hold the human body responsible. But, you know, we own her, of course, because she's, she is Susie Chavez. She has a date of birth, a first and last name, a social security number. This is how we identify her. Consider your choices in life if this is how you're going to react when you get made. Clearly, you need to reconsider your choices in life if this is how you are going to react when you get maced. Because somehow, whatever she did in life is what caused her to get maced at this time. It had nothing to do with the fact that she just put pictures up in her cell, and you decided to punish her for it, and ultimately mace her. Like, 
she has to reconsider her choices in life. At least, even if she did something wrong, like stole something or assaulted somebody or, or something, she doesn't deserve to be tortured like this. And you know who needs to reconsider their choices in life is Eric Allen, the criminal torturing Susie Chavez. How about you reconsider your choices in life? Because if you don't, then there are people who are going to be very upset with you. Keep your face in there, keep the cool water running on it. You'll be all right. You got a clamp? You have something? I guess that was a poor decision. I guess that was a poor decision on our point, pulling the underwear off her. Here Eric Allen says, you think that was a poor decision on our part? Pulling the underwear off her head. So apparently it's underwear of some kind that are on her head. And of course the female officer laughs as though this is this is so funny because maybe if we hadn't have pulled the underwear off her head then maybe she wouldn't be crying so loud and we wouldn't have to deal with this because obviously it's all her fault and it has nothing to do with us who are treating her this way. It's just her fault and we shouldn't have to, we shouldn't have pulled the underwear off her head. Ha 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 ha. Stop holding your breath. I can't breathe though. You're talking to me. Jeez. I need to fill my nostrils. We'll get to that in a minute. As soon as you come out of that water, all of a sudden you're going to start cooking again. And you'll be like, no, 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 I burned. So just keep your face in there, just like that. There you go. You can breathe. Eric Allen, you need a psychological evaluation. You need surveillance in your home to make sure that you are not abusing your family because you are exhibiting maniacal signs of psychopathic behavior. Medical's gonna need to see it. What? Medical needs to clear you. It's not that medical needs to help her or offer her medical attention. It's that they have to clear her. So here we have a situation where Susie Chavez was taken out of her cell and punished. Uh, beaten and tortured because she had pictures up in her cell and that has caused the requirement because of course they have to check off their boxes so it's caused this requirement for her to go to medical but it's not it's not like she's going to medical to make sure that she's okay after all of this torture and whatnot it's to clear her it's to fulfill their legal obligation which requires them to take her to medical if they do certain things to her that they have done. It has nothing to do with compassion or ethics. It's just procedural. Listen, see now what I tell you, see? But it's gonna burn. No way around it. There's no way Yeah, it burns. It's supposed to. No! Oh,
啊！Decency to lay her on the stretcher the correct way. They have to have her laid uh, perpendicular to the to the uh, stretcher. It's like nothing about this is right. There's there's nothing about this that is right. It's like, have you been injured? Well, yes, obviously. I'm being injured right now by all of you. She had drive stuns to her back and wrist uh, lock. So now they're going to punish her with the spit mask. And so here we have somebody who is saying she may throw up. And how does it help to put a spit mask on her so that she can like drown in her own vomit? Is that is that the goal here just to increase the level of torture? increase the terror that you are inflicting upon this person. Like, Eric Allen is a depraved individual who should never be allowed to wear any sort of uniform again, except for a jail uniform, or a prison uniform. There's no police helping you. You help yourself. Like, she's begging other people for help in the desperate hope that one of these individuals will walk into this room and see that something is horribly wrong. And, of course, the police officer says, No, nobody's going to help you. You just, you just help yourself, as though she has some way to help herself. And, oh, and by the way, after this, we're going to take you to the shower.
you can notice the guy standing in the doorway and how he doesn't really want to look at her. He tries to look out of the room or, you know, try to look at anything except her. And you'll, you'll notice how uncomfortable he seems to be in this situation. And it's just, why come to work if this is your job? If you have to witness this stuff, why are you coming to work every day if this is what you have to deal with? Like, why aren't you helping these people? Why aren't you, like, letting people know that, hey, this I feel like this person was tortured today and treated wrongly. Uh, I feel like excessive force was used on her, and, like, it just, something didn't sit right with me. How come, how come you're not saying anything like that? Or sending some of us who may be willing to use the information to help people when they are being terrorized by criminals in uniforms. Uh, you know, you could always send us information on this type of thing that is happening. Please. Well, I, I, I don't know. They probably know already. This child is going to the floor. You're going to get maced again. No, it's going to hurt. You have to be quiet. PSU is going to come by and talk to you. No, listen to me. Listen, we're done with that. we got to move. No. So Susie was just denied water. Uh, no, we're done with that. We need to move forward. And of course we have another officer come in and drop off some piece of paperwork awkwardly. Like, uh, here's the paperwork. I'll just put it on the counter and uh, turn around and not look at what is happening. Because it's too uncomfortable for me to look at. Thank you. Sanchez, Chris Sanchez. says we got you covered yep you're having you're having a little fun with this one go right ahead we got you covered we got a shower set up for her after you're done don't worry about anything just you know make sure that uh next time i need my back scratch you scratch my back and hey you know you have another prisoner you want to torture like this next time i got your back then too we got you we got you covered I can't either. Yeah, I can't do this either, so I'm going to put the underwear back on your head. Like, even if, even if it was acceptable to cover her head in underwear, at least have the decency to not say a single word as you do so.
Let her in, Fox 1. Let her in. Watch the guy pretending to look at a blank whiteboard because clearly he's uncomfortable and huh, I'm just going to pretend to look at this blank whiteboard for a minute. Hmm, how interesting, a blank whiteboard. Hmm. No, because you're not quiet. No, you got to show us you'll be quiet first and then we'll go get you up and have you have a seat. How about that? Yeah, once you've shown us that you can just be quiet and stop crying in the situation where we're torturing you, uh, then you might be able to have a seat. You might get to sit down and you won't have to lay on the floor surrounded by criminals who are torturing you. You can have a seat. You can go up to the next level. Ah, just be quiet. That's all you have to do. Shut up. Shut up. Quiet. Is that for this one? Oh. Wow. Did you notice his laugh? He's like, is that for this one? Asking the woman with the IV, and she's like, no. And he's like, oh. Because I was going to say, wow. Because <laughs> it's so funny if... If, if I did enough to this person where she actually needed an IV, that would just be so hilarious. Sorry. Right. Psych services, any counselor? That's how it works. I can't even stay still. Well, you can you can do a little wiggling, but I need you to be quiet. You're gonna be in a shower in about five minutes. Yeah, you're going to be in the shower in about five minutes. Spoken like a true Nazi. Go for it. 
I think it's effective. Now, keep in mind right now that Susie Chavez is at a medical facility. She's in the medical facility of the detention center. Has any nurse come and looked at her? Has anybody taken her blood pressure? Has anybody asked her if anything is okay with her? Like, the only thing that has happened so far is that she has been forced to lay on the floor and suffer in pain. And because she she can't be quiet long enough to be able to actually sit on the stretcher. Or, and, and, I mean, this is the medical facility. And, and so pay attention to the medical type stuff. Uh, what What sort of medical attention she actually receives here. Hi, I'm Brian, the counselor. Oh, I, I have a paper towel, maybe, to wipe off her wet face, but, uh, am I allowed to touch her, Eric Allen? Uh, of course, Eric Allen has to give this guy permission because he's so uncertain about what to do. Because, obviously, he is not a competent counselor. You know, all he relies upon is... Yeah, what what did Eric Allen say I could do? Oh, he said I could uh, touch her and, and wipe off her face. Okay, so I can do so. Good, 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 good.
So you have a woman crying out because she's just been tortured and Brian's, you know, Brian's method of, of counseling is, Susie, what happened? Chavez, we're gonna go back to the floor. Oh, oh, oh! Could you please? I know that. I know this burns, right? I can see. Oh, can I go back to the water, please? And I talk to you. Not until you, you're going to the shower. As soon as you're done with the psych services okay. interview. I'll be really quick, oh. okay? So at this point, uh, it's pretty clear that Susie is under a type of duress. Um, because she desperately wants to be under the water because her face is burning. But Eric Allen is indicating to her that uh, she will not be able to be under the water until she is done talking to the counselor, which instead of uh, making it a priority to communicate with him to the best of her ability, now the priority is get done with him as quickly as possible so I can get my face under the water so it will stop burning. So this is actually another uh, form of psychological abuse which is being inflicted upon Susie uh, by Eric Allen uh, because he is telling her that, well, the sooner you get done with this guy, the sooner you get back under the water, the sooner you get some uh, alleviation of the pain, just hurry up and get done with him. Stop it! Really gonna start crying? Cause now it almost seems as though the platinum blonde, uh, you know, middle-aged platinum blonde woman is uh, going to offer Susie some comfort. She's putting her arm around her and, and maybe trying to offer her some kind of human comfort to com calm her down. And this is the first time that we've actually seen. Uh, comfort extended uh, to Susie in in all other ways it, it has been completely dehumanizing but uh, as you'll see that even this comfort that is uh, being offered um, is also in a way very dehumanizing as you'll see <laughs> Now you saw a platinum blonde woman look at the officer like, Ugh. and then of course she has no concern about what is actually being said. She's just pretending to be concerned, uh, but it's pretty obvious there is no real concern there at all. So Susie just tried to report the crime that was committed uh, against her by Eric Allen and the female officer uh, to this blonde woman. And of course the blonde woman's only response is, it's over, it's over. I know it still hurts, but it's over now, so let's go from here. Like, instead of, here Susie is in a room surrounded by people trying to communicate to them, um... You know, this officer used excessive force against me, and they did all of these things to me, and they should never have done it. So, all they do is just stand around and do nothing. Nothing at all. Even though a crime has been reported. Uh. 
for uh, she returned from medical. It is recorded. So Brian, the counselor, uh, and the officer go out to so that uh, Eric Allen can uh, debrief Brian. And of course, Brian's concern is the camera. Is it on or is it off? So that he knows. Well, how should I be communicating? Because you know, if the camera's off, then maybe there's some things that I would say that can't really say if the camera's on. But dang, the camera's on, so I won't be able to say any of those things. Um, but here is where counselor is going to be fed information, and watch the counselor's uh, actions as he is being told. Um, you know, what happened, and I think you'll notice a lot of, yep, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, just keep on feeding me information, keep on just letting me know what uh, happened here, and I'm just nodding to let you know that I agree with everything that you say, you know, I'm, I'm just going to keep nodding until you're done talking, because I agree with everything that you say. Uh, when she returned from medical, uh, we were doing a unit check. We were going to put her away in her cell. Oh, oh, excuse me, uh, you're good. Um, we got to the cell. I noticed, or we noticed, that there were things all over the walls that weren't supposed to be. And so the lieutenant put her up against the wall and said, don't move. I stepped into the cell, uh, heard the lieutenant repeat herself repeatedly. You know, stop moving, stop moving, stop moving. I'm going to tase you. Blam. Uh, she gets... Uh, drive stun a couple times. Um, I, I'm not sure how many. I actually had to apply it because she transferred from her taser to a wrist lock. Had to put her on the ground. It, the taser didn't seem to be working, so she was going through alternative force methods. Um, finally got her to where we could get her off the level. She's, you can see the behavior, screaming and yelling. We're coming down the main hallway. Uh, we, we held her up because we're like, we're not going anywhere until you, you're quiet. But ultimately, we put her on the floor. Put her, not don't slam. Just put her on the floor, and uh, the um, the uh, uh, then she starts banging her head on on the floor. That's what caused the the uh, inflammatory agent being applied to her face. Of course, that stopped that behavior. But we've been putting up with I'm dying ever since. And uh, you know, I'm not sure where to go with the, the uh, uh, self mutilation. I don't know. I, she didn't say she wanted to hurt herself. Okay. She didn't say she wanted to kill self -mutilation herself. Self mutilation, as in the. Yeah, the banging. Head. It was it was okay. dedicated and to the point. Okay. Was, <laughs> there was motivation to it. Okay. It was dedicated and to the point. There was motivation to it. <laughs> you know, Eric Allen, you are a sick individual. You think that torture is funny. You think that dehumanizing another person is funny. And you feed information to Brian the counselor who just... Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brian the counselor. You are an absolute coward. You do not think for yourself. You are an order follower. You are a bootlicker. You write psychological reports. You use the degree that you have in counseling or psychology or whatever kind of silly degree that you got into debt in order to acquire. You use that in order to write in your psychological reports whatever a criminal in uniform tells you to write down. Whatever that criminal says happened is what you write down. It's what you believe. You don't care about the person who are, you are supposed to be helping. You only care about obeying orders given to you from individuals who are torturing other people. Eric Allen, you are a criminal. Brian, you are also a criminal and a coward. 
All right, any questions? That, no. And that's done. It's nope. just been the struggle getting her here, her overreact. Well, I don't know, her reaction to the inflammatory agent is just going to inhibit her to this whole process. Yep. yep. So, all right, thank yep. you. I just give you a break. Yep. Nope. No questions. Makes sense. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let me lick your boots. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. So does that mean we don't have to go to the showers? No, no, she's got a right to get shown. Absolutely. It's almost like she was disappointed that this prisoner, this Susie Chavez, has a right to have a shower. It's like, ah, uh, I guess she will have a shower. She wants one, so. And notice how platinum blonde woman uh, pretends to be comforting Susie, but actually isn't. Like, watch her hands and, and the way she supposedly is, like, you know, stroking her hair or her back or whatever to, you know, it, it's generally a sign of comfort. You know, you stroke someone's hair or, you know, rub their back in order to comfort them. And, and notice if you watch uh, the blonde woman uh, do this to Susie, you'll you'll notice that there's no sincerity to it. It's, in fact, it's it's very uh, rigid, very, very cold, and in some ways non-existent, the, the comfort itself. So just watch. But all this drama, I'm just wondering why we're... Am I wrong that the water sometimes makes it activated? Well, yeah, we know how it works. But no, I have. It doesn't matter, but that, my point is, is let, let them finish so we can continue. Please. I'm sorry, James. Hey, Susie, let me make this quick so you can go okay. to the shower, okay? Okay. okay. So, uh, are you having any suicidal thoughts? Yes. Okay. Well, why? Let it do that to me. Okay. I'm already suicidal. I lost my son, and I was already a pet. I was already a pack. Oh, God. And of course, blonde woman's like, what the f What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I have to still pretend to comfort her. <laughs> Why is this human crying? <laughs> So not that I would encourage the consequences that would result as a, a if if Susie indicates that she's suicidal because they'll just treat her worse. Um, but she indicated already that she was suicidal, and Brian is just 
kind of making up his own idea in order to try to have as little responsibility as possible um, by saying, well, what I'm hearing is, is that you're very frustrated and that, you know, you're, you're saying you're suicidal, but that doesn't necessarily mean you want to kill yourself. So, help me bridge the gap. Because all I can do is make up my own type of diagnosis and I just want to make sure that I guide you into saying the right thing so that we won't have to torture you anymore. But but I just I just need you to help me bridge the gap. I imagine that was very scary for you. Man, the, the, the torture that you're describing that these officers did, man, that must have been so scary. And I can only imagine what psychological effects you might be under right now because of that scary thing that happened to you. But, you know, Brian, Brian, you have an ethical responsibility to report excessive force when it is used. You have a responsibility to report crimes that are committed against other people. You have an ethical responsibility to make sure that Eric Allen and other criminals like him are not using their job and their status to torture people. You have a responsibility. Failure to comply with that responsibility is just another crime, which, Brian, you can be held accountable for. And I hope that you are. Because the defense, oh, well, I was just doing my job, is not going to work for you. No, Susie, you know, you did do something wrong, don't you know? You put posters up in your cell. And we can't be having people put posters in their cell. We can't be having people put up pictures. If you have pictures in your cell, you have to keep them in a pile or something. You can't be, you know, using some sort of adhesive to put them on your bed or on your wall or anything like that. Because that's wrong. And doing so will will mean that we will torture you. Come on, we're leaving. Let's go. Stand up. We're done talking. We're, we're done talking. Where did Brian go? Where'd the counselor go? Didn't Susie say that she was suicidal? 
and wasn't she trying to tell you what happened and trying to explain the situation? Where did Brian go? And why did Eric Allen say, okay, we're leaving now. I'm gonna go take a shower. Could it be that Brian never really cared to find out how Susie is doing psychologically? He doesn't care about how she is doing emotionally or whether or not she needs any assistance with anything. That all he did was take a report from an officer regarding what happened and then just say what he was hearing and, and that maybe Susie didn't necessarily want to kill herself even though she said she was suicidal, which is the definition of wanting to kill yourself. And, and, and so, why did Brian leave? Could it be that this is a an unethical... Uh, situation where, you know, this, this, Susie was tortured for having pictures in her cell, and then because of the torture, the, the fact that she was tased and, and, uh, brought to the ground and her, her wrists were locked meant that she was required by procedural law or rule or whatever they want to call it to, be seen at the medical facility and then once she was seen at the medical facility it wasn't like she was actually seen or examined none of her vitals were taken uh, nothing to indicate that she was actually okay but because she was crying the counselor felt like he couldn't talk to her or get her story or find out what happened he had to rely on the police officer and just automatically believed what Eric Allen told him happened could this be a uh, complaint worthy could this be a, a an abuse of the system where Susie didn't get the attention that she the medical attention that she needed or she might possibly have not gotten the medical attention that she needed. And the fact that she didn't, or might not have, means that she might have become injured even further as a result of this. Do we know? Where'd you go, Brian? Why'd you leave the room? And Eric Allen, why did you, uh, why did you tell her it was time to leave now? It's almost as though substantive justice doesn't matter. It's almost as though there's no substantive due process at all. It, it almost seems like it's, it's all just procedural and, and arbitrary and up to the discretion of criminals like Eric Allen to say, yep, we've checked off our boxes. We've, we've done this and this and this and this and this. We've allotted X number of minutes to this. And so now we move on to this. Where'd Brian go? Jen, 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 Jen. 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 Where did the blonde-haired woman go? Susie just told this woman, they're going to kill me. They're going to hurt me. I don't know what they're going to do to me. And Platinum Blonde walks out because she can't handle it. Why the hell are you being paid to do this sort of job if you can't even be a compassionate human being? If you can't even be the least bit concerned about the fact that Susie is worried that Eric Allen and this other female officer 
are literally going to murder her. What, you think it doesn't happen that people, people don't get murdered by police? People don't die in jail? Because of neglect or even just outright murder? The name Sandra Bland rang, ring a bell? Oh, 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 that's right. Yeah, that's right. That was just a, um, a, a suicide, right? Yeah, that, that was just, uh, something, uh, made up to look like a suicide. I mean, I, oh, I mean, I mean, it was just a, a, a suicide, right? They're gonna kill me! <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Is there an emergency? I'm gonna spray you again if you keep it up. Yep, sock back on the head. Oh, you keep crying. You you're saying we're gonna kill you. I'm gonna spray you again if you keep it up. And notice how he made sure that he yelled that really nice and loud while he was outside where other prisoners were waiting, so that those prisoners would uh would also be intimidated and afraid. Oh, boy, have we just found another crime committed? Psychological torture upon other prisoners just by, you know, escorting a woman with a sock or a, oh, I guess it was underwear on her head, um, in order to uh, make everyone else afraid of what might happen if you don't just shut up and obey. I mean, not not obey, I mean comply. Yes, just just comply. Notice how they're walking Susie now. She's walking upright. Yeah, she still has the underwear on her head, but at least they're walking upright with their arms in her arms on either side of her. Is that because maybe that's the way it's supposed to be? And maybe at the beginning when Eric Allen and the female officer were alone, they were both participating in a form of torture? by doing it inappropriately and in a more painful fashion, but once there were more people around, they had to make sure that they did it the right way because there were eyes watching. You couldn't just let her walk upright the whole time because maybe that would have been less painful for her, less stressful for her, less traumatic. I just got done torturing Susie Chavez. I'm so cool, cause I'm a psychopath. I told Susie to shut up and she didn't, so I sprayed her with mace. And now that it's all over, after the torture, and after I gave the Brian counselor a false report, and sent her off into the shower where who knows what will happen to her in there, but... Because I'm a cop, and that's what happens when you mess with cops. When you disobey us, we torture you. <laughs> 